a 30 amp 12 volt solar system that's nothing to shake a stick at all right everybody welcome back to the farmstead uh this is going to be an attempt to make a concise informative video about what we did with the solar realize that i never actually made a video about it yet so let's get started and see how fast we can make this i know people's attention spans are so i'll try to burn right through this uh there are eight solar panels on the roof all 100 watt panels different manufacturers i like to use renergy just because it's the most cost effective there's a long messed up story about this particular inverter uh there's other videos about that i'll get to that uh i'm gonna put in the description and in the comments or in the doobly doos as they say down below uh all of the links for these items the batteries the charge controller and the inverter so let's try to make this quick and easy if you have a building and you have it conventionally wired and it's just residential and you're not running anything too big too crazy too heavy you know a 30 amp system should suffice for just about everything you need you may need to make concessions here or there if the sun isn't out a lot to charge the batteries all the way but there's eight panels on the roof they come down to this charge controller this charge controller has multiple settings for different types of batteries so depending on what your needs may be you this makes this kind for me if i wanted to change something which is why i bought it it makes it uh easier to change some stuff right now we're running amgs they are v max uh v max slr 125 12 volt another thing is the the voltage you could do 12 48 36 there's a bunch of different it you got to kind of build it to fit with 12 what i've noticed is that all the components are typically cheaper so the way you wire the batteries also you can i can put a uh diagram in to show you what i mean right here But if you wired them differently, you can get different voltages. So 12 volt is enough for what we need. We have it just all the reds are jumped through, all the blacks are jumped through. And if you hook up your red to this furthest point, and then your black up to that furthest point, it kind of makes one big battery. If that makes any sense. Um, if I need to elaborate on any of this stuff, guys, let me know. I'll do the best I can. I'm trying to make this quick because, like I said, people don't pay attention. Uh, I watch the retention on the videos, and it's like if you're not fast about the information, they they swipe away. So, uh, conventional wiring in the house. Not this is sloppy right now because we have I haven't gotten it complete complete yet, but it, it's functional. So, conventional wiring in the house. This is going to feed the wiring in the house. Changes it from DC, which is the batteries, to AC, which is what the the house or residential, wherever you're at, shack, is going to be. That's where primarily all the things you're going to plug in are going to be. So, uh, you need enough panels on the roof to charge the batteries in full at least every day or two max. You can't have the batteries be depleted and not be charged in full. You'll damage the batteries. So one other aspect of it is, is that when you're putting the panels, wherever you're going to place them, make sure you know what the path of the sky, the sun in the sky is in various seasons. The sun moves in the sky. You may or may not know that. In the summer, it'll be here. In the winter, it'll be here. Typically, that's not a big deal. But if you have, say, like a lot of trees around, it can be a problem. Pay attention to where the sun is during the different seasons, especially the ones if you're not going to be there all the time where your panels will be in aspect to that sun during that season. Okay, so uh, this is, I'm gonna try, like I said, panels on a roof. Gotta make this quick. I, I could see you guys are losing your attention already, right? Right? Uh, panels on a roof. They come down to the charge controller. Charge controller powers the batteries. It protects the batteries, right? 
it, if the on a really sunny day you'll hear this as a high pitch hum it's because there's so much power being generated that it has to slow it down to not hurt the batteries because you could overcharge the batteries so solar panels on the roof down to the charge controller charge controller controls the charge to the batteries the batteries you're going to want to get some kind of monitor to make sure that you can see what's going on uh, these are really cheap there's all kinds of different ones you can get whatever you want it'll tell you the percentage and the voltage of where it is max is obviously 100 percent full and you'll see 14.4 is typically the max that the batteries will go to it'll deviate different times of the day depending on the usage so from here from the batteries it's going to go to the inverter the inverter is going to change it to ac to power the house it's not difficult uh but there's so many different variations that you can try to do this with that's where the nuance comes in so if you keep it simple and keep it concise you can uh you can achieve a lot but if you get into the nuance of like what if i need this or what if i need that what i would suggest is that you get what you need bare minimum that you can expand on and then at that point it's not a lot to change something so this is a 60 volt i'm oh, sorry a 60 amp uh charge controller you we can use this obviously for 30 but if uh if i go to say put more panels on the roof and get a bigger battery bank and then a bigger inverter we have a bigger system you don't have to do it that way but you know 30 amps is typically enough you get a small system about 30 amps it should get you through uh, with that being said nothing is perfect so you may need to make concessions depending on what the weather's like as far as the sun so i hope that that made sense i hope that you know there's not a lot of questions that need to be answered but let me do this real quick okay so these wires come from the roof they just come down there's a um pipe outside that brings the wires down this is a 10 gauge wire comes up to a breaker this is so that if there's any potential problems we can turn it off to maintenance it or it's also form it also works as a breaker itself it should trip at a certain voltage say lightning strike or something like that uh from there to the charge controller charge controller see that light flashing that means it's collecting energy from the sun right now various knobs uh i'm sorry various settings on the knob for different types of batteries it's set on agm right now because that's the batteries this i find to be helpful just in case there's something that we want to expand on you know we won't need necessarily a new charge controller these can be expensive sometimes so it comes out of the charge controller, goes to the batteries. Uh, as you can see, like I said, the reds are jumped through, the blacks are jumped through. One side for the red, the other side for the black. That makes sense. That'll, that'll give you what essentially would end up being a whole battery. Okay, so that's when you wire them like that, it'll give you one big battery. From the battery now, to the inverter this inverter it goes so th there's two bars on here that's see the, there's two bus bars they're both 120 that's the reason for both of these so there's two bus bars these feed both of the two bus bars they come up to this j box and it comes down through the back side goes down to the bus bars so if that makes any sense i hope it does uh and then from there, it's all conventional wiring. This is quite a mess. We're going to have to clean it up eventually. But, you know, uh, it's all been an experiment. I haven't had a chance to clean it all up yet. But this works. It's functional and it's safe. So I hope that that makes sense. And if it doesn't, leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think.